I've been having a lot of fun experimenting with my clip-on macro lens, but I'm aware that not everybody has one of these. Fear not, because I'm going to show you a way to get some delicious macro and close-up shots with nothing more than your smartphone. Just add water. One of the main challenges with getting close-up shots of your subject with a smartphone or with any camera is this working distance, this minimum focusing distance, and the fact you can't get too close because it just can't find focus. A macro lens bends the optics and lets you get right up close. But you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a macro lens to get that same effect. If you were to drop with a pipette or, or an earbud or something, just a little drop of water onto the camera lens, that has the same effect of refocusing the optics and letting you get really, really close up to the lens. Now, I should say, electronics and water don't mix particularly well, so I urge extra caution with this. What I'm gonna do is just lay my smartphone flat on the surface here. I've got one of these little pipettes from a, a kid's science experiment set, but again, you could use a, a chopstick or, or, a, or, an, or an earbud or something. Now, as you can see, when I get close up, nah, no way it can focus. My, my, my minimum focusing distance is about, I don't know, 10 centimeters or something, anything closer than that, and it's really struggling. So, what I'm gonna do now is just get I think maybe a drop or two of water and just pop it over this lens, just like that. And now everything has gone blurry. We get the same flower and introduce that into the frame and let's see what happens. There, that is how close I am. And now you're in focus. Isn't it wonderful? All the money you can spend on a macro lens, but a little drop of water actually has the same effect. So you still need to use focus on your phone. I'm gonna keep my phone as still as possible. There we go. And because I've got the front facing camera going, this is letting me compose. It's letting me see what is in and out of focus. Oh wow. It's almost like I've got a live microscope here. And everything that's in the background, my hand holding the flower, everything that's on the ceiling here is all nicely blurred, all nicely out of focus. That's amazing, there we go. I love these bright colors as well. Now, as always with macro lenses, you've got a very shallow depth of field. Because I've got my camera flat on the surface, I can just use my hand to control, control the height, the, the distance of, the, of my subject from the lens. You do need to have a steady hand still because any little movement does get magnified. And the other thing to be aware of, I think, as well, is the fact that when you press the shutter button on here, unlike a physical glass lens, your water lens will wobble around a little bit. So a little tip, just turn on the countdown timer. So that means after I've pressed the shutter, three seconds later, the exposure will be taken, in which time the water should have settled down so maybe we just get the ends of those two one there we go the other thing i'm going to do is just introduce a little bit of light because when you're getting so close to the camera lens you will block out the ambient light so just a torch or what whatever light source you've got it's going to pop that just on the angle there. Let's just see. Oh yeah, that does make a difference right away. A view out there. And I'm getting that macro lens effect without the macro lens. Focus, your depth of field is really, really shallow, which is why it's good to have the phone on a flat surface and be able to use my hands just to make those little micro adjustments. Let me get those close-up shots that I want. There we go. Lovely. It's surprising what a little drop of water will do for you. Let's try a different one. This bell flower just popped out to the garden before. Right, let's see if I can just drop that on top a little bit. See what we get. Oh, wow. There we go. Nice. 
nice and kind of milky texture. There we are. Now what you have to be careful of is not, <laughs> is not touching your lens because you may cause it just to disperse entirely. There we go. So you still do have to work quite hard with the, with the focusing here. I mean, what you can do is kind of lock focus just by holding on the screen and then moving your subject up and down to find that focus rather than your phone hunting it. There we go. And let's try this fuchsia. Again, do check focus still. You know, even though you do have the macro lens on, you still do need to lock focus sometimes with your phone. You know, I'm being as steady as possible here with my hand. And it's still wiggling around a fair bit. So it's trying to get trying to get a clean shot is a challenge. Always keep some kitchen towel handy just to mop up and you know when you uh, want to reset just a little mop like that. And it's all gone, it's sucked it all up. And again, I'm now back to my normal non-macro lens. Have an experiment. The reason the front-facing camera obviously works very well is that you can see in real time uh, what's in focus, what's out of focus. The front-facing cameras on some phones aren't quite as high resolution, aren't quite as sharp perhaps as the rear-facing cameras. But the images that I'm getting, I think, are still really sharp, really compelling, and certainly very interesting for my social media feeds. <laughs>